everyone. Um, don't know how many of you will be out there today. Uh, this is the first Friday of the month, and we're going to wrap up Color My World. I'm going to talk about the quilting that I did on Color My World and give you some tips about that. And then I'm very excited to talk um, some more about Garden Party Down Under, or as I like to call it, Garden Party Down Under. Uh, Irene Blank, our designer, is uh, lives in Australia, and she has, I love that wonderful lilting accent, and um, so you're going to get to uh, meet her some and uh, when we get the show rolling here in January, but we're going to talk more about that that quilt here before the this live ends, and I'm, I couldn't be more excited to, to share more information with you about it. So let's first talk about Color My World. If you're not finished yet, and a lot of people aren't, because this is a big project, and I understand that completely. So if you're not finished, don't worry. The videos are not going away. The blogs are not going away. That My blogs are my opportunity to teach you things, um, skills that you can use in these projects, as well as other things. I teach a lot of things on the blog, not just the, the block of the month things. So uh, they're not going away either. You know, you'll have access to those. But the patterns will not be available for free after December 31st of 2022. I've mentioned that several times. It's been in the newsletter. We ju I just can't say it enough. The Our contract with the designer expires on the last day of the year that the block, uh, the block of the month is for. So come January, we don't own the rights to it anymore, and we cannot give you any of those patterns. You would have to buy them directly from the designer, in this case with Color My World, Wendy Williams, in Australia. So um, please don't let that happen. Happen. And if you save them on a thumb drive, be aware that those crash sometimes. They sometimes don't work. Hard drives crash, things like that. Um, so, and if you print them out, make sure you remember where you saved them so you can find them again whenever you're ready to get back to it. So that's just important information uh, to keep sharing with everyone to make sure that you know that they are only, the patterns are only free during the year of 2021 for Color My World. Okay, so let's talk about quilting on Color My World. I did quilt this one myself. I spent about six days quilting the whole thing last, gosh, a year and a half ago now uh, in the, the summer of 2020 because I was going to the taping in August. I had to have this completely done. Uh, and it's a good one. I think it's a good one to quilt yourself if you have a desire to do some more of your own quilting. It's not that large. It's not like it's a queen or king size. About Mine was about 75 inches square. Um, and it's just a, a good one to practice with. The uh, the blog that I wrote on that came up Wednesday, December 1st, two days ago, I, my blogs normally are released on Wednesdays and Sundays. I only do two a week. But the blog on Wednesday, this just this past week, was um, quilting, how I did it, lots of pictures, lots of step-by-step -step instruction and all of this. And as I said, my blog's a chance for me to teach you the things that I'm trying to get across. So I'm going to switch to my camera now and see if I can show you up close a little bit about uh, my Color My World. All right, let's go there. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about is thread. I had gathered a variety of threads that I wanted to use. And for me, the most important thing was color. I also wanted a fine thread because I knew this quilt was going to take a lot of quilting. And so I started with, I just gathered a bunch of threads that I had that I thought would go with the fabrics that I had. Some of these are quilters select. The orange stripe means 80 weight. That's a polyester, a fine polyester thread. The green little stripe on the green label is a 60 weight. It's a little bit heavier, but it's still, it's a cotton wrapped polyester thread. And to me, again, as I said, the color was most important. Here's an Aurifil. This was a great green. This worked out really well. That's a 50 weight, but it's quite comparable to the other threads. This one even is a so fine. This is master, um, superior so fine thread. This color was great and I use this color a lot. So I just pulled through a lot of threads looking for the colors. There's a pink one down in there and there's some yellows and golds and things like that. The primary thing that I do every time I'm going to uh, quilt, make a quilt, when I get my back decided and I'm going to recommend for this quilt, if you're doing it yourself, the unless you're a spectacular quilter, either by hand or machine, putting a busy print on the back is really going to save you a lot of oops. I mean, I dare you to see those stitches from here, even if I put it right up against the um, camera, you can't even see those stitches. I use this color thread for the back. This is Micro Quilter. It's a superior product. It's 100 weight. It's very fine. 
It's not the least bit wiry. This color is color 7026, 7026, and I used it for the back. The entire back of this quilt was had this in the bobbin. Then in the top for my <clears throat> um, quilting, I was going to do the stitch in the ditch, of which there is a lot on this quilt, and I'm going to show you up close. I used the color 7025, which is kind of a gray-green kind of a color. It's a great color, sort of goes with everything. And again, it's fine, and I used it on the front. So a lot, all my stitch in the ditch was done on the front with this. So as I'm getting a quilt ready and I've decided on the back and in this case, the batting and I put wool batting in here. This is Quilter's Dream wool bat. It's, um, I like wool bat for the definition it gives. I like the wool bat because it's soft and it's thin and it's just really quilts beautifully. It also washes up and my quilt has been washed and, and I air dry my quilts when I have wool batting in them. A few of the wool bats say that they can be dried on cool or low temperature and I just find it smarter for me if I've got a wool bat. My label says wool bat, air dry only, and I just lay it out to dry, which also allows you to sort of block it as you're going. But here's the thing I always do when I'm quilting one of my own quilts. As I get the layers basted and get figured out what's going to be on the back and the batting and the then, of course, the top fabrics, I just use leftover chunks of these the fabrics that were in the quilt. So here is this tan color. There's this red piece of the, the two greens. I knew that was important because my tree chops are these two greens. These are the kit fabrics from Color My World. And then uh, the gray, the blue, and the purple. I didn't use them all. I just used a few enough chunks that I could see. And of course, I needed a piece of this because this was my border and this is my background. And I was definitely going to be able to want to check thread color on it. So that's as, as fancy as I make it. I actually did piece this together quickly. But sometimes all I do is just lay these strips down on top of the batting and the backing so that I can test the fabrics. And so that's what I did here. And you can see when I was playing, the only place that I really worried about um, free motion design, because everything else was in this quilt was ruler work uh, or some real fine stippling, which I'll show you uh, some of the windows and things. But um, these two greens, and I used one green thread uh, for it was one of these, and I'm not sure if I grabbed it. It's one of the Quilter Select greens. It might have been this one that worked beautifully on both of the greens. I didn't switch from a darker green to a lighter green. The one green did the trick on that. But I just played with, first I thought I was going to do leaves. So I played a little bit with leaves, and I wasn't real keen on how they looked in this shape. And then I said, well, let me try some swirls. And these came out look more like S's, cursive. I didn't like that. So then I took the template for the shape and I actually drew it on here so I could see exactly where I was going to start and give myself an idea of the density I was after for the tree traps. And this is pretty much what every one of my tree traps tree tops now looks like. I just came in from the side and did some squiggles and changed direction. This one went this way and then this way and back and forth. And I was much more happy or much happier with that than I would have been with these. These just kind of, like I said, these, well, this isn't working too well with S's. So, so that's how I just played with the different color and different things that I wanted to try um, before I go to work on the actual quilt itself. So let's look at the, the quilt. It's sitting right here by me. Get these out of the way and the thread. Okay. All right. So, and as I mentioned, there's much better pictures of all of this on, on the blog. Okay. Here are some of those treetops. The, I started first once, it, and I basted these with pins. Some people like to spray baste. I just used um, safety pins and basted the whole thing out on a, in parts on my dining room table and got it nice and secure and ready to go. But the first thing I did was in the ditch quilting everywhere around. So when I get to my center, okay, I just stitched um, around the circle, the outer circle of the Mariner's Compass, the big points of the Mariner's Compass star points, just in the ditch all the way around. I had come up with some designs here to fill this space in, so I did this. And I used a, I use a line tamer ruler for my straight work. There's quite a few straight line rulers that work really well. Um, find the one that really works well for you. If you're going to do ruler work, you have to have a ruler foot. 
And you can do it on a domestic. I have a sit down Bernina Q20 sit down long arm machine, or you can do it on a standard long arm machine that's on a frame. But there is a lot of traveling, which is why I love that micro quilter really fine thread. The I'm going to go around these places and back and forth and over uh, uh, spaces again and again to get from one place to the other. With machine quilting, the idea is how uh, far can you go without having to stop and start your ends and your stitches? So when I got the middle, basically just stitched around the outside shapes, like those star points, and around the roads on the outside, uh, again with that gray-green thread. And then I came up between each of the houses, and I went in between each of those. I went around the tree trunk, close in there each one, and I traveled and traveled again. So let me see if you can see here take my pencil point off. And there's a lot of traveling stitches in here as I would move from one place to another. Once I came back and was ready to do the trees, I'd come around the trees and then I would travel again to get to the next tree. So there is a lot of traveling, but it's that fine thread. It's that greeny beigey kind of thread the, that just disappears. And I did a lot of that traveling all around. I spent the first two days just doing stitch in the ditch around the big shapes. I didn't go in and start doing the building um, until all of the stitch in the ditch was done. When then I got the same thing out here on the tall buildings. Again, I went between them and just with the gray green thread to get the stitch in the ditch done. And there is, I decided to fill in these spaces above the um, tops of the tall buildings with uh, about a oh, three quarters of an inch or so, someplace they're narrow or someplace they're a little wider, just straight line quilting. You could do any number of other things. I could have put in more stitching, but typically I start with less and then keep going until I get to where it's done and then I can decide should I add more. A lot of times due to um, the fact that I'm on a deadline, I don't add more. The quilt might be better with more, but you get to decide how much quilting your quilt really requires. The more quilting it probably is, the better, but sometimes for me, uh, enough is enough and it's just done. While I was working on this, I, of course, I didn't have anything quilted in the border as I was doing this inside part. And when I got over along working on this top of these tall buildings, it occurred to me, and there's a lot of traveling. I think you can see that there's three or four layers of thread right along here, but we have to be this close to see that. You do not see it when you're looking at it from six feet away. Um, so don't get this close when you're looking at somebody else's quilt. But I had this part undone and I was working along here and I realized that while I was, I liked how this was looking, these kind of straight lines through here using my the ruler for line tamer ruler for straight lines. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do the same thing out here. I had seen pictures of Wendy's quilt and that's what it looked like. Wendy's quilt was quilted by a long arm quilter in Australia. And I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And it occurred to me, while I was doing this middle part, that there was no reason I couldn't go ahead and do this too at, at the same time before all the rest of the inside was done. Once the stitch in the ditch is done, you've really secured your pieces pretty well. And you don't, you can remove the pins as you go. And you just don't have to worry about that. I didn't have to wait till the entire quilt was done to finally go out to the outside border. And the great thing that worked for me, because again, I was on deadline, is once I got this border done, and I spent probably the better part of one day, well, half a day probably, working my way all the way around, then I went ahead and added the binding and a sleeve. I always put a sleeve in my quilt, and I incorporate the sleeve at the same time I do my binding. That's I've got tutorials on that on my blog. There's lots and lots of information on my blog. You can find about how I do sleeves and bindings. But I went ahead and I added the sleeve and the binding, and then I was quilting during the day and I could hand sew the binding, which I always do. I hand, I like to hand sew the binding down, especially if it's an important quilt for me. If it's a baby quilt, a heavy duty use quilt, utility quilt, a lot of times I'll do it by machine, but I like to do the hand stitching on an important quilt. So at night I wasn't using, I was using all the time I had. At night I was stitching the binding. It took probably three nights watching TV to stitch my binding all the way around, but then that was all done. And the only thing at the very end I would need to do is sew down the bottom edge of the sleeve. Here's my sleeve. And that didn't get sewn down, of course, till the entire quilt was finished. But so that was the, how I did that. But um, I really played with once all that ditch quilting was done, that's when I went in and pulled out the threads. 
So I would just pick a color to start with. Let's say this aqua kind of color here, which I know I used on these windows, probably on one of the, on some of this housing too. And I just loaded this in the top. I had the same bobbin thread as I mentioned earlier. The, the entire back only has that one bobbin thread, that um, beige color 7026 micro quilter. But I would then, I did every single place in the quilt that needed this color. So here are these windows. And the, the diagonal lines, I use the line tamer ruler that has great markings and I can space my lines apart. No marking was necessary. I didn't put any marks on the quilt. And then I had looked at Wendy's pictures pretty good to be able to see how the different parts of her quilt were quilted. And this I just did free motion, just these little, you know, narrow. I didn't use the ruler to keep them straight. They're straight-ish. Uh, as Angela Walter says, and that was good enough for me. So I went over the entire quilt, any place that needed this thread color, and did all of that. And then I switched to the next thread color. Maybe it was the orange color. I found every place in the quilt that needed the orange. And I just worked that way all the way around. There's some lavender, of course. I put purple in every quilt. I've been accused of putting purple in every quilt. There's one or two I've made that don't have any purple. But um, same thing with this. I did this on wherever this needed to be used and went around the whole thing. And when I got the entire quilt done, there was only one place I had missed. And I think it was a red th section that I had missed, very small amount of red. And I had to go back in and put the red back in and finish those last little bits. So um, that is uh, how I quilted this. I the, Every bit of this, you know, stitched in the ditch with that same beigey, greeny kind of color, that 7026 um, that I worked on with here in the Eiffel Tower and all the other um, skyscrapers as well. So that is the, the gist of how I worked on doing the quilting of my quilt. It took me, as I said, six days to quilt the whole thing, probably four hours a day. So about 25 hours probably of quilting this. I was very pleased with how it came out. Uh, I washed it and then I air dried it, laid it out fat, flat. I blocked it, tried to get it as flat as I could and let it dry for a couple of days. And it hung beautifully in the studio when we had it um, there for the taping. Now, gosh, year and year and a half ago almost. So, So that is that one. Let me see if we're, yes, okay. Um, oh, a busy back, I just wanted to mention that. A busy back, um, besides the fact that it's great for hiding thread changes, it also hides any mistakes that you make. If you were to put a white or a very light solid on the back, you'll see every bit of it. But uh, every little spot, every wiggle, every place that didn't go quite the way you wanted it, this one is perfect for this. I love the, this. It looks like a tweed, but it's a cotton fabric, came right off a bolt. It was wide, good stuff. I think it was 90 or 108 inches wide, so I didn't have to piece a back, which is an, an added bonus. So that's what I talk about with the back. So now I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to do some more looking. All right, let's get into here. Good. Okay, let me get this out of my way and put that down. Put that over there. All right, so here I am on the website, and I know that I'm logged in because it says log, uh, well, it says welcome, Barbara, and my picture is here. I'm here on the forum, and you can see where you are because it's highlighted in this gold color on the purple uh, bar. So I'm in the forum, and this is the home page of the forum. And this is what uh, we call the breadcrumb section. It says, you are here. You are on the forum. So uh, most of you are familiar with this, but if you're new to this or you're thinking about our next uh, block of the month and you're new, I want to make sure I give you a, a few minutes of running by this, how you can navigate the forum. Uh, there's a section up top that starts with classrooms and lives where Alex's classroom uh, is, but then there's the block of the month section. So over here on the left, you can see latest forum posts, things that have been people have written about getting quilting, color my world. I wrote that the other day. Get excited. That's about the new one. Color numbers. Uh, somebody asked for color for Alex's embroidery class, some numbers of threads. And so you can look if you've seen something recently and you don't remember exactly where you found it. This is a place to look that you can see where they might be and click on them to see if that's the spot that you wanted to go. Um, so color my world, your finish here. I want to go into this one. I could, I know it's in block of the month 2021, so I could go there, but since I know that's where I want to take you, I can click right here and it's going to take me there. And again on the breadcrumbs. So we're in the forum and we're in the 2021 block of the month, color my world. And we're on this topic, your finish here. 
All right. So the most recent one, I've got mine set for most recent that come up first, latest activity. And this one was written uh, this morning, as a matter of fact, just after midnight by Mary R. She did a great job. She says, I've finished my version of Color My World. I substituted two of the skyscrapers. She visited Space Needle in Seattle on the Washington Monument in DC. Fun challenge. Love how it turned out. So when you click on this, the actual picture, you can see it bigger. And it is quilted too. This thing is done. So uh, kudos to you, Mary R. That is fantastic that you've got it done. Here's her Seattle Space Needle. You see it looks very similar to the legs of the center point tower that's in Sydney, Australia. And then here's her Washington Monument over there. So let's say that you want to see all the pictures that are here. This is brilliant. I just learned this the other day on the phone with John. He says, let me show you something new. So I'm in this topic, Color My World, You're Finished Here. I can click on Photos. And we have five pages of posts, but here I come here and I've got 49 photos to look at and they come appear in the order first to last. So this is the first person that posted her picture when she got her top done. And this is Helen W. She did it, made her quilt her own. She's really got this as extra special. She actually combined a couple different projects into this. Uh, this red border is really interesting. There's some other borders that are interesting. This one's got a puppy on the middle of it. So if you see any of these here that you want to see, you could actually then just go back into the posts and start looking for them. Because they are in reverse order, you could go to the, the oldest ones first and look back. But there are four pages of pictures here. So you can skip over to them. I'm going to have to, one more time, Carol, just bear with me one more time. Carol Berry, I think she gets embarrassed that I brag on her so much. This is Carol Berry. She's from New Hampshire. She is a new quilter to this. Uh, she this just amazing what she did. She had and you can zoom on this and get up close. She has used wool. Hers is wool embroidery, a lot of stitching. Look at that road. Her road is a flower petal garden of roads. And it is just so amazing. She has made this her own by absolutely sure. The outer road is flowers as well. And I've got to show you the next one that she posted, this one. This is the, it says municipal building. It's a, uh, in her hometown where she has lived all of her life, the clock tower time is set to the time Carol was born. And I just think that is brilliant that she has made this quilt her own, just like she did. So she's made these embroidered uh, wool appliques and she's put them on a linen background. That's what she did with hers. So you can look at these and if you can see them and be inspired, there's a different, there's a dark background. You can click over here. We'll go to the last page, which will have the newest ones that were put up. Um, this is their, oh good, there's some, these new ones right here. There's another one. So it just shows you if there are photos posted in the particular topic that you're in, uh, you will see the photos. If there aren't any photos posted, it'll come up that there aren't any photos. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that thing that's new. Um, okay, I want to go back now. So I'm going to look at posts. All right. And post, this one comes up with where I've started this one here. Um, and then the next, I started it on October the 9th, or November 9th, and then November 10th, Christy G made a post and she included her picture. So he, just again, I'm going to review a little bit with the forum of what you can do. Uh, if you were Christy G, you could edit this post. Um, you could quote it. If a person has asked a question, it's really nice to, to do a quote, and then that will provide everything that she has said, and you can answer below it. But if you just want to give a comment to it, if the person has asked a simple question, you can hit comment. The thing I like the best, and people don't use very often, is the, the like button. There's a like button here, and um, 22 people have liked Christy G's post with this. And I, to me, it's like the like on Facebook. It's a way to say, hey, that's really great. I thank you for taking the time to do it. So I'm a huge fan of the likes and I, and I like to see those. Um, okay, showed you that. All right. So that's kind of how we navigate. So I'm going to go back to the forum because it's easy to click right there. You could also back click, back click, but I know where I'm going. So I want to go there. 
All right, now I want to talk about, and if you have any questions about Color My World or Garden Party Down Under, be entering your questions now as I'm talking. I, I'm trying hard not to talk. For, I could talk for hours about this next quote, and you don't want me to do that. So um, I'm going to try to get to them here quickly. But um, let me show you a couple more things now about Garden Party Down Under, and I will check your questions before we finish. So Garden Party Down Under, I've got the... Um, we already set up a section, a, a category for this. And right now there are three topics in there. Um, big reveal, get excited, and my sample quilt shows a picture of what my quilt looks like. So that's um, how you can get into the forum when we're talking about for, for next year's, for starting in January of 2022, Garden Party Down Under. Okay. Now, um, the I want to go to... Where do I want to go first? Okay, I'm going to go to shop. Okay. On December 1st, which was two days ago now, Alex and Kristen did a wonderful live, and you can still see it. I'm going to show you where that is if you've missed it, uh, revealing the kit. And so uh, all the photos, she took all the, showed all the fabrics and everything that's in the kit for Irene's. So I've gone here to the, sh to the shop and it's got a scrolling banner. So things move. You just might happen to hit it exactly right when you get there, but you can come down here to favorites. And the one we're going to look for is 2022 block of the month garden party down under. So when I click on there, it takes us to the part of the store that has this. Okay. Here is the kit. All right, folks. I cannot tell you enough how great this kit is. I did not use a kit because the kit, I got my kit today. One hour ago, my kit arrived at my house and I had to make this quilt last May. So I used my own fabrics to get mine going so we could have it done in time for the taping in August. Um, and you will see pictures of mine each month along with Irene's. It took a, a, a lot of effort uh, on the part of the good people that work the store, uh, the shop for the quilt show, Kristen in particular. And she worked and found 54 different fabrics from 10 different manufacturers. So just think about what that took to get all of those fabrics selected, ordered. They had to have enough um, bulk um, amount. But if one bolt wasn't going to do it, they were going to need quite a few. And then they had to all be shipped to one place so that they could be kit cut into kits. And so that has happened and the kits are now selling. Folks, this is not a, a pitch. If you like these fabrics and you want your quilt to look like that, you need to order that today. Uh, uh, I was got a text from Alex last night. In the first day and a half, they have sold two thirds of the available kits. There will be no more kits after this. There is no way to go back to those 10 manufacturers and pull out another 54 fabrics to get those kit again. It is now or never. If you like this kit and you want your quilt to look like Irene's. They are not exact because as, as I did with mine, Irene used a lot of her own fabrics, but they have this feel, the that Australian feel that most of us Americans don't do very well. So, um, or we don't, we're just not familiar with it. So I, if you want the kit, don't wait because I'm, I, I told Alex last night, they'll be gone very soon. Uh, and there will be no more. And that's just now that doesn't mean you can't make the quilt because I'm going to show you how you can make it with your own fabrics. But there's a few other things that you might want. If you're using your own fabric, the accessory kit is helpful. Um, the thread kit. One of the great things that Irene shows us in her instructions is that she doesn't use multiple colors for all that hand applique. She uses uh, about five different threads that range from fairly light neutral to, I think she includes like a medium brown for her darker pieces. And so this uh, quilter select thread works really well for that. But I'm a fan. I love color. And I worked my, a lot of the part that I did, if I did any hand work on this quilt, and I actually did a lot of machine work on mine, uh, this thread is great. It's the 80 weight quilter select bobbin set. And it is wonderful. Just a reminder quickly that uh, orders over 80, uh, over $100 get free shipping in the U.S. So if you select this, uh, look around and see if there isn't something else that you want that'll bring it up to $100 and you'll save on shipping for sure. So um, that's the pitch about the kit. I'm, you know, it's, they're going to go away and they'll, when they're sold, they're sold. And so um, that's that. Okay.
So the other great thing about the kit is that there are only a few fabrics that have to be reserved, the outside border fabric and the binding fabric. And there are 10 inch squares for the vases. Everything else, all the other colors of the kit, you will put wherever you want them yourself. Uh, yours will, uh, which I love. I say that a kit fabric, a kit quilt, um, when we do it this way, where you're selecting the fabrics you want to use for every individual space, each quilt will be as unique as its maker. So um, that's the important thing to be aware of for that. We're not going to tell you that this color goes on that flower. You'll do that yourself. Okay, so here's where we find all this stuff. We go to learn. And we get right here is Garden Party Down Under. I think that's so cute. You can also find it over here under Category, but we can click right there and it'll take us to it. And I'm going to show you a couple of things. So here's a picture of Irene's quilt. Um, it says that kits are available, very scrappy. Kits will do, 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 you must be a star member. You're aware of that. Then we've got the Introduction Fabric Requirements and Resource Guide here. So we click on this and it will bring up Okay, the first section you come to is videos. This is the video that Alex and Kristen did on Wednesday, December 1st, and you can click here to see it, uh, where they actually open a package of the kit and run through all the fabrics. But tab over one to patterns slash documents, and now you find these two patterns documents. The first is the intro and fabric requirements. I'm just going to show it to you with a view file. And I'm going to try to pick up the pace here. Uh, this is eight pages, and it includes a lot of information, and it includes every one of the fabrics that are in the kit. So you can look at those and get a sense of what they look like. Um, you would be hard-pressed to find these in the world out there to try to put this kit together yourself. Most of them are fat quarters. Uh, some of the uh, background fabrics, there are larger pieces of that. And then the 10 inch squares are used for the vases. You have a few extras of those so you can decide. There's binding fabric included. Um, and then also in the kit are paper notions, paper pieces. And I'll talk more about that um, in later in the year when we get going on that. Right. So there's that one. Let me go out of there. Come on, back over here. All right. Um, what to do? Close that one. Okay. So there was that one. This resource guide, I just want to show it to you quickly. I put this together last week. And the as a STAR member, you may not even be aware, but you have access to every show going back to 2007 when the quilt show began. So the first show I'm going to strongly encourage you to watch before you start doesn't um, come up until, oh, I've written January 1st. It's actually going to uh, appear on Sunday, January 2nd, and it's show number 3001. It's where um, uh, I worked with Alex and Ricky in studio showing the various steps. There's a lot. I take you through the whole process, showing you the process. Uh, I strongly encourage you to watch that before you jump into making this yourself. And then we had um, two, a couple of great applique master classes, number one and number two, class number 2701, 2702. You can see a variety of people, of our teachers who have come and done shows, and you get, you know, four or five minutes from each one that you can see and get an idea. And there's some of it as handwork, some as machine work. And you do have that option with this quilt. Although Irene Blank does everything by needle turn hand applique, I will tell you that there is almost none of that on my quilt. We had a month to get the top made and there was just not going to be time to needle turn that whole thing. So we did all turned edge machine applique. And I'm going to give you a lot of information on that when we get going. You can use the search feature when you're on the shows. You can use search by category on the shows. And then I've listed here just eight other shows that you might want to look at. Uh, Sue Garman, my uh, beloved friend, is no longer with us, so she is not teaching anymore. But you can see her show 304, where she shows how she makes stems and circles. And other people as well. Uh, some of this is machine, some of it is hand. Uh, my most recent show I thought was great was Annie Smith doing her invisible blanket stitch, and that appeared just earlier this year. So um, take some time. If you're excited and want to get ready, you're not going to get the pattern until January 2nd, but you can get started looking at these um shows and give yourself an idea of how you can do things. Okay. Um, and then we've got, I'm going to show you one more thing that they don't know I'm going to show you, but I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, let me get, let's see if I can get to it here. Do, 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 because I may not be speaking to you again until January when we get started. So yeah. Okay. Here it is. I'm an admin. All right. So I'm going to show you just one little bit of month one.
Okay. Month one, which you don't have, so don't look for it. It's not there yet. I have access to it, but you don't. Here's the thing I want to show you. As I mentioned already, videos, which there will be, I have to get a couple of them made. I'm going to make a few simple little videos. The show itself, show 3001, is your best video. It's an hour long, and it has lots of detail. And But then we've got patterns and documents. So just like I showed you before, you could download or view the file. I'm not going to pull it up right now and show you, but here's what I want to point out right now, and then we're going to have to get to the questions. This, The thing that will be different about this and some of the other blocks of the month that we've done or you may have found other places, there is a lot of information, some months much more. In this first month, there is six different downloads. The uh, There's an applique pattern, so that'll be one of the downloads. There's instructions from Irene on creating the block. There's the border fabric pattern, the border pattern from Irene, which tells you how to do that. I have an alternative border. I have written a set of instructions, which I call optional alternative techniques. And there are places where Irene did everything by needle turn. And I, uh, again, for speed, changed them to paper piecing or regular piecing. And so I have detailed instructions for that. And I'll show you how to do that. We have the original, we have a three and a half pages from Irene of general instructions. And then I have written a total of uh, almost 12 pages of instructions. But the first month, I think you get five, five pages of instruction. So when you, to get ready, and I'll do a whole blog on getting ready, you'll want to have ready at your house on January 2nd, ink and paper. Because that'll be, there are six downloads, and it clearly tells you that that's what you're looking for, six downloads. And you'll come into them, you'll hit the download, and you'll print each one individually. So, okay, I am going to go back over here, put myself back on the web top, and then I'm going to go look at your questions. Uh, okay. Uh, I always feel like there must be somebody out there. So let me see. Okie dokie. I'm going to go up here to the beginning. Hello from Texas. Hello from Florida. Hello from Illinois, Ohio. <laughs> Rondi says, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Rondi. Hello from Chile. Uh, Maria Elena is often with us from Chile. I'm always glad to see her there. We got Memphis. Uh, to, 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 to do Toronto, Canada. Welcome. Good afternoon, Barbara. Can't wait. Good, good, good. Can't wait to get started on the new block of the month. Birmingham, Alabama, just down the road from me. Uh, I just said 2022. Oops. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably talking too much. We've got Germany in the house. Welcome. Thank you. Keep up the lessons video. Whoops. Do, 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 do. Okay, please. Uh, printer setting. Beth asked, what's the printer setting? Uh, it, actual or 100% are the two options that you typically will see on a printer setting. My HP uses the word actual setting. You don't want um, print to size or scale to size. That will make it smaller to fit on smaller pieces of paper. All right. Let me see here. Let me go back. I'll jump down to the bottom accidentally. Do, 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 do. Bureau Beach, love this. Okay, to keep them, will they be available if we don't renew star membership? Um, I'm not sure. I think we'll get an answer from John on that. Lakeland, I know they're going to stay on the site. Will all my instructions be available? I know to print out the patterns. Your instructions are valuable. I like to have access to everything that I've done on my blog is absolutely available as long as Blogspot exists. And then the videos, we are keeping them as well. Oh, I was going to show you, and I didn't show you where those were. Um, will they be in the block of the month section? Yes, the the block of the month section is where the videos are. I uh, found it like Amazon. You don't, you don't have access to. Okay. Do to do Louisiana San Antonio. I love San Antonio. Would love to go teach in San Antonio. I put white on the back. It made it easy to find the bits that she missed quilting. Well, that's true. Carol's quilt. All right. Yep. Carol's quilt. Ah, there she is, Carol. All right. Love the photo pages. Can you please remind me of the printer? We talked about that. Um, garden party I just mentioned uh, you can do I'm calling this quilt a great one to learn however you want to learn applique and you can do a variety of them on the same quilt a friend stopped by the other day and I asked her are you going to do this the next year's quilt she said no I really don't know much about applique and I don't think I'm very good at it I said well it's hanging on the wall you want to go see it she walked here into the studio saw that quilt behind me and went oh oh my uh, yeah, I have to do that. So I said, you don't have to do it by hand needle turn if you don't want. I'm going to show you how to do it other ways. Um, it doesn't have to be slow. It can be fast. Um, the kit, 
Um, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's we'll talk about that. The kit. I'm going to show you mine. Lake Havasu. How big is the quilt? About 75 inches square, depending on what you do with an outer border. Somewhere in there. There's England. Um, good, good. We got the... Yep. Good there. They do have me coming back to the 27th of December, that Monday. That's a Monday. We're going to do a little uh, video to get ready so that you can make sure you have ink and toner and printer paper and all that good stuff. Uh, yep. And John told us there it's 27. England, another England. I want to do the center as a pivot. That center's pretty big. If you include the outer border, the center itself is 18 inches, just the uh, the center applique block. If you add the next border as well, um, we get up to about 35 inches square. Okie dokie, more England. There's my friends in England. Bottom line choice, thread, sure, would, would work as well. That's a 60 weight from superior uh, thread. Uh, thank you from Kaz. Thought I had done a good job. Well, that's the plan. I aim to please. Um, okie dokie. How would you choose your own fabrics? My blog on Sunday will walk you through that entire process. My blog is bbquiltmaker.blogspot.com. There's links to it on the website, on our TQS website, or you could search for my name or on Google, or you could search for, um, to, uh, my joyful journey is also the name that I call it. Uh, and I'm going to show you a fun and easy way to do that. So, okay, let me go back over here. All right, so as I mentioned, one hour ago, now an hour and a half about now, this came in the mail. This is my kit, and I haven't opened it other than to open the package. The It's beautifully wrapped. It's so beautiful, like you don't want to take it out of the package because you'll never get it back in there. But the I showed you where you could see all of these fabrics. The nice thing about this, Kristen showed this the other day. This border, this one fabric they designed for the border, picked it for the border because it is close to what Irene used for hers. And Irene called this a picket fence. So they found a stripe for that and packed in the middle. Um... Well, I thought it was packed in the middle. And this one, it's not packed in the middle of this one. Well, but there's a blue fabric that is um, real pretty blue that is uh, for the binding. So you do get that. You don't get the back. And, of course, you don't get batting. But there's that piece. So you need to save this. Do not cut this to use in the middle of the quilt at all. You will not use this until month 10 when we get started borders. So that's one. Um, here's that other border background fabric. I must have pulled it out of there incorrectly. Uh, and then there's some six, uh, 10 inch squares that are big enough for those vases. And so they're really fun. And don't start using those on flowers because save those for the vases. So, um, okay, well, I have really taken up a lot of time. I'm going to check one more time and see if there's any more last minute questions. And then we'll go. You can always put questions on. I go back into Facebook a little later um, this, after I get lunch today. And then I go check and see. And I'll answer your questions if I find them there. So let me just see if I see anything else. Uh, yes, it will test your color placement. Kaz is right. Thought of piecing the fabric before you make the vases. Thought of piecing the fabric before you make the vases. I'm not sure, Karen, I understand that question. Piecing the fabric before you make the vases. Hmm. Okay, maybe you'll clarify that and then I will be able to answer you. Um, okay, so let me just go back to here so we can be done for... Okay, well, um, I've run on a little bit longer than we typically like to. Um, Sunday's blog, webcam. Oh, I just, it, I want to encourage you to remind your friends about this. One of the things Carol Berry, uh, who made that great, um, applique or embroidery quilt with the wool, she happened to mention the other day that she, but just by dumb luck, found out about this starting last year, right at the very end of the year, right at New Year's. So she was right there from the beginning. Don't let your friends get left out. Let them know that they can get into this and get started right from the beginning. I hate it when I find out about a great block of the month four or five months in that I just like, oh gosh, I have to catch up. So, um, but the great thing about this, if you sign up and become a star member now and your friends who aren't members, this is, you know, this is the last little bit of the commercial on this. It, membership is $49 a year, and that includes all the shows that we do going forward, as well as, as I mentioned, 14 years of shows going back. And they currently, they will have access to a grand total of three blocks of the month from now until December 31st, Color My World is still available. Um, from now until early March of 2022, we have Janet Stone's 2014 block of the month called A to Z for you and me. That is available only until March. 
And then, of course, starting in January, the, the new one, Garden Party Down Under. So that is a bargain, folks, for $49 a year. Um, and then I just encourage you to uh, read my blog posts. Uh, that's what I do. I don't monetize it. I make no money on those. I don't intend to. It's my chance to teach people who want to know what I've learned how to do. And it's just my chance to, to teach things. So, And this is where a lot of the, the teaching comes from. Uh, anyway, so that's the story. And I better hang up. <laughs> you all have a great day. And until I see you again, that's a wrap.